Hey guys, it's this Slayer Diego's here. So, while looking through my channel, I saw plenty of you took notice to my DayZ review, which got me thinking, how about I review other open world survival games and see how they compare? Now, I don't want you guys to get the wrong idea here. Open world survival games can have a bunch of different stuff in common, and a bunch of stuff they do uniquely, but the number one thing I will count is the fact that in order to survive in the game, you have to eat. Food must be used for food, primarily. This is why games like Terraria and Breath of the Wild won't be included, because they treat food more as health potions and buffs rather than an actual survival necessity. Second order of business will be these five topics. The first being, is it beginner friendly? Now, not all games need to spoon feed you, but they don't have to knock your head off every five minutes. Two, there should be plenty to see and do. I mean, it's an open world survival game. Having that big world with nothing to do in it and being pretty empty is pretty redundant. And come on, a little story and background never hurt any game. Thirdly, general gameplay, how does combat handle, how does your searching, exploration, leveling, and basic mechanics of the game handle. Uh, this is also tied into how much or how little you need to look up how to do certain stuff, because I'm screwed if I'm going to spend every five minutes on some wiki looking up how to do something specific in the game. Number four, online play and the community. How good are they? Now, how good is teaming up with your friends or random people in survival? If it's the same as if I were to do it by myself, what's the point of even having it? And how welcoming is the community? Now, not everybody has to be nice. No one has to treat you right. But making a good impression on newcomers to a game is really, really nice for people who are not sure about a game. And a bad impression could leave them not wanting to come back to the game. Number five, playability. Now, I say this as, like, how fulfilling is your survival? Like, the balance between easy and hard. Like, if it's too easy, you don't feel like you've accomplished anything. But if it's too hard, you feel like you're not getting anywhere. And how is how easy is it to get to God tier, which is your max level? And finally, what pushes you? Is there something after you get to God tier, or is there some, like, reason to keep playing because if you get to god tier what's the point of even playing why not i just sit in my house in the game all day and do nothing if i can't do anything else past this point now lastly and biggest disclaimer this is just my opinion based on these categories if you don't like it that's fine and if you have any suggestions for games in the future please leave me a comment below and i will definitely check them out and the better the game performs at these categories the better i will rate it and the last video i do in this series will be my top pick so anyway let's get right into it with our first pick which is don't starve together i put together simply because of its online playability now starting off with story, there is a little cinematic intro that I guess is something tied into story, I don't know, it was just included in the beginning of the game but I decided not to show it here simply for the sake of time saving, but if you guys are interested you guys can go and check it out on your own, but really there's not much story or th much to be told about what's going on or why you're in the place where you are and don't starve, but anyway, let's get right into some stuff that makes this pretty unique and interesting. The first big thing that I like about Don't Starve is the different game modes that you have. You can choose between social, cooperative, competitive, and madness, each adding their own different twist on the game and different stuff that you can do. Of course, competitive, more PvP focus versus cooperative and social, more PvE oriented. That way you can work together with everybody. And madness, best of luck to you. The second thing I like about this game is the customization of your characters. You can have the default character, Wilson, or you can move on to other characters that bring different skills to the table. But keep in mind, most characters that bring a skill to the table are also hindered by something that is a drawback to your overall survival. So, choosing someone that has a buff may be risky because of their debuff. That's why Wilson is, of course, the generic man to pick which is fine but you can choose different stuff and that's what I like I like variety different options what you wanna do goes so jumping right into it I wanna get something off my chest real quick and state that I am actually having my younger brother 
record me some gameplay because he's never actually played Don't Starve. Most of the other games on this list he has touched in some way or another or he's seen gameplay. Don't Starve, he has no idea what's going on, what he's doing. So I decided it would be perfect in, of course, the step one, which was how easy is it to grasp and for new players to understand it. So, of course, he didn't exactly spawn in the best of spots. Of course, he has the pigmen around, which are a little passive... Um, creature, but they can also become hostile if you attack them. Of course, these guys, I don't even know what their names are. Wet Merm. Yeah, those guys. They're not exactly friendly, and uh, he has no idea how to do combat in this game, so, of course, only option would be to run away, but the thing about these guys is that they're actually faster than your run speed, so it's kind of hard to get away, and he's just being constantly pursued by them for quite a while. After that, he's surviving his first night, and he actually was smart to build a fire, because for some of you who don't know, you're, if you are out at night, and you don't have any light source, you will actually die due to darkness. Darkness can kill you in this game. Another thing about this game is your sanity. It's one of the three things you have to keep up. Your health, hunger, and sanity. If your sanity goes too low, then uh, you'll start seeing these shadow creatures and it'll start really hindering your ability to play. But what's even worse is if your sanity goes too low, you will start being attacked by these things. They can hurt you if your sanity gets too low, which becomes becomes another thing you have to worry about in this game, which is nice. I like that like little twist on it that not only do you have your surviving, but you also have your sanity to keep, which is, I don't know, I just like that little twist on it. Of course it was a little risky to show that scene, of course, without explaining to you guys first where my brother was, which was actually in these little sinkholes, which are really cool other areas to explore on the map because it allows you to go underneath the map and there's plenty of new stuff to check out down there, which is nice. I love variety in games. That's why I love customization. That's why I love different stuff that you can do and how diff you can play the game in different ways. Like, see, in this area, it's very dark. It's only illuminated by plants instead of the sunlight and your sand is constantly being drained down here but again like I said there's so much new stuff to explore down here which makes coming down here really worthwhile and there's also plenty of exclusive stuff you can only find down here versus topside and this is also a good way to get better loot and all that other stuff but of course like I said it's a risk because of your sanity as well as other creatures that only exist down here now the last thing I want to mention to you guys is I don't want you to think I hate this game in any way. Of course, I had to put something second to the bottom, and Don't Starve I had to put there simply because of a couple of things. One, harvesting takes freaking forever. If you've seen harvesting grass or sticks, it takes forever. Second of all, there's very lack of explanation on how to do stuff, and figuring it out without looking it up is near impossible. Lastly, is once you die and you, you're the only one in your world, your world will actually begin a counter down there. Now, I don't know if you can see that, so here, I'm going to zoom in for you right here. But that clearly says your world will reset and to reset it now if you want. Why in the world would I even bother playing this game if I die I lose everything, whereas other games, you lose, you can lose everything, but you're not restarting everything. Versus here, everything I'm doing could basically be wiped away like that. I snapped there twice because I'm awful at snapping. Don't judge me. And lastly, uh, the online, I haven't really had much problem with. It's decent, it's fun to play with friends, it does get a little easier to play with friends. The only thing I will say is annoying is that when your friends die, one, you can't really bring them back without a specific item that you can craft. Two, they actually lower your sanity because they turn into a ghost, and that of course hinders your sanity. But overall, I'd say that the online is pretty decent. It's not bad at all and haven't really had any issues with it like I said just those little drawbacks but of course like I said this game will have to go at second to the bottom because of its glaring oversights in restarting the world how long it takes for you to gather everything that you need and overall like there's not much to really see in the world other than just surviving and like I said again I don't want to have to look up stuff to figure out how to play this game, so that's why I put it second to the bottom. 
But anyway, I hope you guys like this review. Um, I plan to be releasing these like as often as I can. Of course, I'm going to be getting gameplay and getting like all this different stuff collected together to make these videos. And yeah, uh, definitely leave a like. It helps me out a lot. Um, subscribe for more content and to get notified of when I upload my next video in the series. And again, please comment what you're thinking on these. Maybe mention if I missed anything and anything important or if you have any suggestions for any games that I can review for this and uh, as always I will see you guys in the next video you guys stay classy out there come to the dark side